Only a handful of pictures will shape how we remember this interstellar visitor. China's Tianwen-1 Mars orbiter released rare images of 3i Atlas from Mars orbit, catching a fast and faint object as it swept past the red planet in early October 2025. These frames are more than pretty visuals. They are a proof of concept for deep space target tracking from another world, and they give researchers a fresh angle on the comet's coma, its motion, and its evolving activity. What exactly do they show? And how did engineers even pull this off from tens of millions of kilometers away? Begin with the essential context. 3i Atlas is the third confirmed interstellar object found in the solar system, discovered in July 2025 and moving on a hyperbolic path that will never loop back. It swung past the sun at the end of October and then continued outward on a one-time trek. In early October, weeks before perihelion, the comet's track carried it relatively near Mars, close enough for an opportunistic imaging campaign. Tianwen-1 carries a high-resolution camera designed for mapping the Martian surface, but with careful planning and tight pointing, it can chase faint targets against a moving star field. Now to the new images. On October 3, 2025, Tianwen-1 recorded 3i Atlas from a distance of about 28.96 million kilometers. Engineers downlinked a 30-second sequence and assembled an animation that shows the comet creeping across the background. The shot is hard because the object is faint, and it moves faster than typical deep-sky targets. In the processed stills, the comet appears as a condensed central glow wrapped in a wider haze. That is the nucleus buried inside a cloud of dust and gas known as the coma, a structure that can span thousands of kilometers even when the solid heart is far too small to resolve. Why shoot from Mars at all when Earth has powerful telescopes? Because geometry matters. From Mars' orbit, the angle between Sun, Comet, and Observer differs from the angle seen at Earth. That shift changes the phase angle, and therefore how dust and gas scatter light toward the camera. A different geometry can reveal a sunward fan or a subtle tail orientation that is easy to miss from a single vantage point. Multiple viewpoints help separate genuine structure from a projection effect that depends only on our line of sight. Translate what is in the frames. The bright central spot is sunlight scattered by dust and icy grains close to the nucleus. The surrounding haze is the coma, a thin, expanding atmosphere that forms as frozen gases warm and turn to vapor. Tianwen-1's images emphasize presence and scale, rather than delicate filaments. They confirm a well-developed coma, weeks before peak solar heating, matching earlier infrared spectra that reported a high fraction of carbon dioxide relative to water. That composition points to formation in a very cold region of the comet's natal disk, where carbon dioxide freezes easily and can drive activity even when sunlight is still weak. If the coma is that active, should we expect a dramatic sweeping tail? Not necessarily, and here is why. A comet's apparent tail depends on dust size, emission speed, and viewing angle. From Tianwen-1's lookout, the tail can align partly sunward or along the orbital path, a geometry that compresses delicate features in a two-dimensional image. Small fast grains are blown back quickly by sunlight and make broad, faint structures. Larger grains linger near the nucleus and thicken the coma without forming a long streamer. A bright coma with a modest tail is exactly what a gas-driven regime can produce at several astronomical units from the sun. How did the team get these shots with a camera built to map Mars? Planners modeled expected brightness, geometry, an angular rate against the camera's tracking and exposure limits, rehearsed the pointing, and then ran a short burst to freeze the motion. The result is a time-tagged sequence in which the comet shifts steadily across the frame while contrast stretching brings out the low-level glow. The campaign also served as a technology demonstration for future missions, including Tianwen-2 small-body exploration, by proving that an orbiter around one planet can pivot and catch a faint interplanetary target on short notice. What do these frames tell scientists beyond the simple fact that the comet was seen? First, they provide positional data. Even straightforward centroiding across the sequence can refine astrometry, helping ephemeris teams cross-check tiny non-gravitational forces from outgassing that nudge a hyperbolic path. Second, they reveal coma morphology. If repeated sequences show a preferred sunward fan or an asymmetry that evolves with rotation and solar heating, Modelers can infer active regions on the nucleus. 
Third, they capture activity cadence. A clearly visible coma weeks before perihelion, recorded from an off-Earth angle, supports the view that volatile ices beyond water were already carrying the load. Do pictures from Mars settle social media claims about color changes or exotic behavior? No, but they anchor the conversation with documented geometry, dates, and distances. Many vivid frames that circulate online are false color composites made to isolate specific gases. Those are valuable for science, yet they do not represent the view at an eyepiece under natural light. The Tianwen-1 products are best treated as calibrated context that you can tie to the comet's trajectory and lighting conditions, not as evidence that the object is switching colors from day to day. Set expectations about resolution. At nearly 29 million kilometers, even a sharp camera records the comet as a condensed glow rather than a resolved nucleus. That is normal at that range. What matters is signal to noise in the coma and the repeatability of features across frames. The simple fact that a Mars orbiter pulled a 30-second sequence at all speaks to careful pointing and stable tracking. It previews what dedicated small-body missions can do when they meet their targets at closer distances, where jets, shells, and knots can be tracked in real time. Here is a quick back of envelope to calibrate your eye. Suppose the visible coma spans a few thousand kilometers, while the observing distance is just under 29 million kilometers. The apparent size on a detector is only a few arc seconds at most, comparable to or smaller than the blur size of many spaceborne cameras at that range. That is why the frames look like a bright core with soft edges, and why temporal sequences and contrast stretching become essential tools. So what is the practical impact of the Tianwen-1 campaign for observers following along from Earth? It provides independent confirmation that the coma was robust before perihelion, and validates a second vantage point to cross-check morphology claims. It also shows that a Mars orbiter can be repurposed for opportunistic science on transient targets. That has value for planetary defense practice and for planning missions that may need to pivot quickly to observe something unexpected. Pair these images with Earth-side and space-based spectra, and you get a more complete picture of what the comet is actually doing. Could we see more from Mars orbit soon? perhaps sharper frames or even a sequence that tracks tail evolution over several days. That depends on cadence and mission priorities. Available notes suggest this was an expanded scope activity rather than a standing program, but the same planning playbook could be reused if conditions and resources allow. Meanwhile, the most detailed truth on composition continues to come from spectroscopy, where space telescopes and large ground-based instruments measure gas ratios and constrain dust grain sizes. A follow-on Mars-side imaging run after perihelion would be especially valuable to compare coma brightness and shape as the heating dial turns down. Now zoom out and place these pictures in the interstellar context. Aumuamua looked like a bare rock or fractal shard with no detectable coma. Borisov was a classic gas and dust machine with extreme carbon monoxide. Atlas adds a third template, a carbon dioxide-rich object that builds a substantial coma while still far from the sun then slides through the inner system on a safe and distant pass. Each case highlights a different recipe from a planet, forming a disk around another star. Tianwen-1's frames remind us that even modest-looking images can anchor big conclusions when they are timed, located, and combined with spectra. Before closing, a reality check for anyone who saw sensational headlines. Agency guidance and independent reporting stress that there is no hazard to Mars or Earth from this pass, and that bold claims about dramatic color flips or alien engineering remain unsupported by observatory data. The value here is measurement, positions, brightness trends, and coma shape recorded from a second world. That is how science progresses on targets we cannot fly past, and it is how a small catalog of interstellar visitors becomes a set of real physical comparisons. Watch for three kinds of updates in the coming weeks. First, image releases. Any follow-on Tianwen-1 frames or processed products from other Mars orbiters will help test whether the coma shape evolves as the observing geometry changes. Second, spectroscopy notes. Teams will post new constraints on carbon dioxide, water, and carbon monoxide that can be compared against pre-perihelion values to see how the mix shifts on the outbound leg. Third, ephemeris refinements. Updated solutions will continue to fold in fresh astrometry checking for subtle accelerations from outgassing. Each of these clues adds a tile to the mosaic, 
and together they reveal whether the comet fades in a textbook way or writes a more complicated curve. The bottom line is clear. From nearly 29 million kilometers away, a camera orbiting Mars delivered a documented look at an object from another star, one that is already reshaping the very small catalog of interstellar visitors we can study in detail. Tianwen-1 sequence shows a condensed core and a wide coma that fits the emerging picture of a carbon dioxide-driven comet. When those images are combined with Earth-side and space-based spectra, a coherent story emerges. Interstellar comets come in many chemistries and many looks, and a multi-platform, multi-world observing campaign is how we will decode them. The wonder here is quiet but real, written in pixels and timestamps from a spacecraft circling another planet.